if you're gonna get yelled at from by Miranda Lambert from stage, at least get a good photo out of it. And they did. Brunch. Hit it, boys. <laughs> I look real good today. The man shaved his head for for content. Literally, I feel bad saying I, I feel disingenuous saying that I shaved it for content. Uh, I, I mean, like not... you, you, the seedlings of not doing it for content could have been there, and I know that they were, but you still did shave it for content. Wait, what do you mean the seedlings? Like of you not were like, doing... I think I'm gonna go even shorter after you got your after you got like you you cut yeah, it from yeah, long I was to already, short. Yeah, I was already you were planning like, on I buzzing might my head. do shorter than this. Yeah, and it became like a a topic of contention because. Oh, you want I, to be the shortest? <laughs> yeah, because uh, you had long hair. I cut my hair short, and I was like, "I'm the short haired boy. We're in our, I'm in my short hair stage because we always alternate." Mm-hmm. And then you were like, "No, nah, I think I'm gonna, sh- I think I'm gonna go short." And then you went short. I don't know if, but but there's we've never alternated. Like you, the only time there's that we've maybe both had like short one hair. Total week of the podcast's history where I've had shorter hair than you, and it includes. Like the last two days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, there's only one point in podcast history where we've both had like short hair, and it was at the very beginning. Yeah. And ever since then, either you or I had long hair. I, there, I feel like th- I'm getting some like stolen valor there. You had like one long hair thing. Let me yeah, be the yeah, long hair. It, it was for like two years. Was it? Yeah, it was like during the pandemic, I had long hair for the entire time. God. Yeah. Time flies. Um, but yeah, I did, didn't do it. F- I I definitely killed two birds with one stone. I was uh, working on that video anyway and was chipping away at it. And I knew how I basically had like every second of it planned out. But I I wanted uh, something. I, I I just needed to accelerate the uh, downfall <laughs> of the uh, main character. And it, it, it needed bottom. to have like a melt. It needed to have a lot of meltdown elements. Uh, so I wanted there to be something where I googled "Am I dying?" accompanied by like me giving up on life. And in my vanity, my idea of giving up on life is uh, cutting my hair. I like that. Uh, that's your idea of giving up, and that's what you wanted to do in real life. <laughs> You yeah, that's the thing. It like it was same thing. right. I was talking to a friend about it. I was like, "Yeah, boy, that character sure wasn't doing well in the video." Huh? It was done very tastefully in the video. I will say the uh, it had a big um, like uh, war flashbacks kind of vibe to it, where it was like um, transparent. Mm. It was like sort of transparent. You could just see like oh it, yeah. I was it was very tasteful. This that video very artistic man took. Uh, I don't know how many real hours because I chipped away at it over maybe the last like three weeks, month, something like that. And uh, I, I, I wasn't doing so hot the last couple of weeks and I just like needed to I, I, I have so, like 13 different things I could be focused on right now or stressed about. And uh, an issue I've had recently is just like frustration with not uh, like completing things or not seeing things through, which is an issue that a lot of adults have. But I was like, I need to fucking finish something. I am going to finish this fucking uh, shake it off video. And I was talking to my therapist about it. And I was like, you know, like I'll tell myself, like, these are the five things I could be doing. And then a week later, I'm like, these are the five things I could be doing. And I'm like, time is passing. What am I actually accomplishing? I'll go and, and I'll do like a little work on each of the things. But at the end of the day, time passes. And what have I done? I was like, so what do you recently. Have to show for it? Yeah. So I was like, so uh, honestly, I've just been like grinding away at this one thing. And she was like, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's good. It is. You're like, you're finding one thing and you're going to. Uh, I, and I, I likened it to like if you have like a lot of bills or credit cards or whatever, you're supposed to um, you're supposed to like attack one at a time, mm-hmm. says uh, Ramit Sethi in his awesome uh, book where he tells you to not buy a house. You're supposed to, like if you focus on this one thing, you're not going to do it all in one cycle. But like if you knock this down a little, finish it. Now you've suddenly got more attention or funds, whatever, to pay to this other thing. So I was like. 
that's maybe the mindset I'll take on. She was yeah. like, that's great. So like your gut, you got one thing you're focused on. That's good. And I was like, I feel like it, I, I should I tell you what the one thing I'm focused on is? Because it's not like, it's not like getting a job <laughs> or <laughs> anything. But if it makes you feel better, it's still a thing that, that has value. It, yeah. Yeah. I it, mean, like when, when I fall into like depressive episodes or whatever you want to call them, like, and I get in like, I'm these, not depressed. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and I get into like these funds, uh, like it really, the value of doing like very small things around the house that are like productive are it like, it is the most important thing in the world for me. Yeah. That's such a good call. I've been, uh, yeah, just like cleaning my apartment I've, uh, even whenever I'm here, I'll, uh, come in and turn the shower head, uh, <laughs> a little you. bit just to, I have meant to do that so many times. I've, I'd be so confused if it happened on like a Wednesday yeah, when they weren't here. I know. I fucking gave it away now. I've like really, I've only thought like 20 total seconds about it. But uh, I did think, I was like, what if I just fucking replace the shower head one time? <laughs> did you see my update this week? They did it again. Oops. No. They, no. It was. It's. You didn't see it. So I tweeted about it, uh, yesterday because today's two. Yeah. So they came yesterday. Um. So uh, as an update, uh, if you didn't hear the episode from I don't know like three four weeks ago, patreon.com uh, slash listen to brunch. An ongoing battle with my house cleaners. Um, like almost every time they come, they clean my bathroom, and when I go to take a shower after they leave. The shower head is pointed towards the middle of the room, and I never check it. So I turn on the water, and it sprays the water, but either in my face or like in the middle of the room. And what a shock that is every time! Never learned my lesson. Um, I did. I did check this time. Went to take a shower yesterday after they came. Shower head pointed towards the shower. So I was like, "Oh, all right, maybe this battle is over." I turn on the water. The shower head had been slightly unscrewed. Yeah. So the water just kept fucking like spraying out of like where the nozzle meets the shower head. And I was like, this, this has to be a thing. Take that, loser. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has to be a thing. They have to be fucking with me. And I don't know. Because why. they're not they're not messing anything else up. It's no. not like they're like unscrewing door handles and they're not like nature. they're not stealing anything they're not doing anything so maybe like, they are stealing and this is the cover-up i've been watching a show called 24 uh terrorists huge into diversions okay yeah fair but like all right so if they're stealing it's fine because are they're, these, they're, they're, they're stealing shit that i don't notice are so these really house care. cleaners uh associated with uh Nina Myers, not or that, that guy of. played by C. Ma, who shows up at the end of every season. The last like three episodes of every twenty four season. I was gonna tweet this, but I was didn't know if I, just because it involved a Trump thing. But I was gonna say uh, twenty four writers, or the writers for twenty four with three episodes to go every season, and it was gonna be Trump saying <laughs> China, because <laughs> no matter what's going on, it'll be like the whole season will be it'll be. American dudes in there. It's it's or like one season. Like Jack's father is the bad guy. Yeah. So it'll be American dudes. It'll be Russian people. Uh, one year it's the that woman uh, Dina Raz. There's uh, an English woman one year. No matter what happens, it's all at the end. That same motherfucker shows up and he's like, "Thought I was gone, huh, Jack?" And I'm like, "I didn't think you were." No gone. matter who like the bad guy is, they're just like a puppet for China. And they're <laughs> always working for, and it's not even China because the the guy that uh, that Zima plays uh, is after like two seasons, they're like. Oh yeah, China like got rid of that guy forever ago. They've been trying to kill it. Like China doesn't like that guy anymore. And they're like, "So why are you doing all this stuff?" And he's like, "To Fun. get back at China." <laughs> you're like, "So who is this?" It's not. Is it's against just like everybody except for you? And he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> and they, I forgot they kill Audrey, man. This may contain spoilers. I don't. Know, I don't know who that is. Did you? You never watched it? I did, but like I, I watched it like fifteen. 20 Audrey years was ago. Jack's. Uh, I would oh, wait. say like second pillar. The the blonde girl. Audrey was bad. Yeah. Wait. The, Audrey. No, was... no, that's Chloe. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, but uh, Audrey famously is uh, blonde. Okay. So Very I'm... hot person. Okay. Good. For Jack her. actually uh, famously ha had attractive lovers, except for uh, Renee, 
she was attractive until uh, they killed her right after he had sex with her. Mm. Well, he finished, and then like a sniper took her out. Well, I mean, she went out at the height of living, so... Maybe. I, mean, I wouldn't well, say it would be the height of living if it's with Jack Bauer. Fair. Height. And it's, it's, Freddie Prince Jr. famously said that short bitch was a real pill to work with. Uh, <laughs> I had to cut you from that uh, video, by the way. I know. I saw. And I offered, I offered you another role, and you couldn't do it. Yeah. So I was like, Pete can't be mad <laughs> if uh, when he gets... You gave, me like, you gave me like 12 hours notice, but you were working on something that you needed to finish. Had to keep it to 90 seconds. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a thing. But I was like, got to keep it to 90. It's like anything on social, anything longer than 90 seconds just goes right in the trash. Nobody cares. All right. That's the accepted. only reason why our uh, our Top Gun song didn't pop off. Possibly. Because it was just too long. Uh, and YouTube just couldn't believe that it, was, that it wasn't <laughs> the real thing. You mentioned social media. Uh, how about Elon Musk's Twitter? You seeing this? Elon Musk bought Twitter. And I have often complained that there are a lot of Twitter accounts called blank out of context and every single thing they share is in context it'll be new girl out of context and then there'll be a screen grab that's like hey schmidt it's jess <laughs> you know from new girl and they're like oh my god that's so out of context or it'll be like baseball out of context it'll be a guy like running the bases and falling down i mean it's like, literally it's literally just that is just an excuse to post screenshots of the show just for say retweets. screenshots yeah. instead well i got to give credit where credit's due elon musk's twitter is finally doing things out of context like just because elon period all you're seeing now i don't know if you've noticed this the you now the the tl gives you replies to tweets not attached to what they're replying to. Oh, so no, I haven't seen that. It's been happening the last couple of days, and I saw people talking about it, and I actually saw one where uh, a mutual friend of ours was replying to one of your tweets, and I could tell that it was a reply to one of your tweets, but it what just looked it? like they were just tweeting kind of about you. What was it? It was uh, Skirt replying to your tweet about the person saying to show your nips oh yeah that was literally like two hours like an hour yeah ago. <laughs> and uh <laughs> that is a weird one to get like out a, of context it was just like, like can on we the get TL, it? it was just like can yeah, we get a on, trending pete, dump a, pete dump yeah, him out it was like can we get pete dump him out trending <laughs> yeah that's nice a tough, job. One, tough one to get out of context <laughs> nice job elon if you were any more of a mess you'd be uh country music are you seeing this country music is just a pr disaster yeah, I mean, there's so what? There's uh, who is it? Garth Brooks is nope. Garth Brooks killed a guy. Uh, um, who's uh, Jason Aldean? Okay, is, you're, you got there. J yeah, but Garth Brooks killed a guy. Uh, Jason Aldean. I didn't even know about Garth Brooks. I don't know about that either, but I just saw Garth Brooks killed a guy, according to Tom Segura. <laughs> Comedian Tom Segura wants to know where the bodies are. <laughs> Garth Brooks. <laughs> See, you didn't even know about this one, and this one's this one was first on my radar. Garth Brooks killed a guy. Uh, Jason Aldean uh, doing racist stuff mm -hmm. and wants to shoot people in his hometown. Uh, Miranda Lambert, not a big fan of people taking pictures at her concert. Mm -hmm. Morgan Wallen, still racist. Probably, yeah, probably <laughs> spouting off saying who some else we got. Things. Well, well, Kid, Kid Rock is a little old at this point. The, Kid Rock shooting Bud Light cans. I've actually. Twice in the last three days, I've had longer conversations about Luke Combs's cover of Tracy Chapman's Fast Car than I expected. But that All has right, been that's, that's there's been a lot to, of discourse. That's there. not to Luke Combs's fault. Like just covering a popular song, right? Like it's fine. Like it's whatever. Yeah, I'm, I was. I'm I, more. I'm more upset about the reaction to Luke Luke Combs covering a popular song. Why specifically that song? Because. It's just so much worse than the original. It is. Yeah, okay. So That's definitely one of those songs that like does not need to be covered. And if it is covered, it should be very different from the original. And that one's just like a carbon copy right, of the original. Right, it should just be close to as good or better. That I, I feel bad for Luke Combs. Obviously, he's getting a ton of money off it and a lot of fame and notoriety. But I don't know. You're just kind of asking for trouble. You cover a song that people would generally consider uncoverable. Although I have been, I've accepted some points that going into the discussion, I was not, I would not have accepted 
earlier. The big one was I was talking to a friend last night about it. Um, and he, we were discussing how Tracy Chapman has uh, typically not been super willing to let other people use her stuff. And there was that like dance version of their like that electronic version yeah, 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 of Fast Car one, yeah. in 2015, I think. And that was like, I thought that was cool. Yeah, and uh, I think that one's that, better like, because it's different. It's way better. It's yeah, different. Way, yeah. way, way, way better. Um, but I, I said the reason I can't take this new version seriously is part of what makes Fast Car so great is there's just pain in the performance yeah. and you could just hear like this this woman is fucking tired yeah. you know yeah and oh I, yeah and he, it just sounds like he's like reading off a piece of paper but my friend was like you don't know that uh this luke combs my friend going into the conversation my friend didn't even know who luke combs was yeah uh but he was like hey we don't know that luke combs doesn't have pain and uh, like maybe that song means something to him or I'm sure it does but like you can't you can't feel it as a listener that's, that's the only thing yeah uh, it's not for me. I think it's like I. I think it is quite bad. I feel bad because uh, my friend Brad just came across it for the first time like three days ago. Yeah. Immediately shared it on Instagram with like I gotta say, Fast Car is one of the best songs ever. I can't stop listening to this cover of it I just heard, and He's I like did what big music any guy. friend would do, which was say like, I can't tell if you're kidding or not, and he was like. A lot of people have replied to me with that, and I was like, "Fuck, I'm sorry." Ooh. And then I felt bad because I was yeah, like, "Because I was like, like you, don't you like, like this, so yeah. that's fucking cool don't, that you like it." Don't yuck his yum, but also it's like I know I know Brad a little bit. Yeah. He's like an extremely talented musician. Yeah, and it's stunning to me that he would be like, "Hell yeah!" Gives me hope. Maybe he'll like my music. <laughs> then he likes that stupid ass trash. I, uh, uh, it's just like you know, I don't know. Like it, I also think like a transition to adulthood is. Or like like senior adulthood is getting mad when the youths misinterpret a cover as like the the original version. Like it makes me infuriated to think that some people are gonna listen to the Luke Combs one and be like, Wow, this is such a good song. Oh yeah. Wow, great writing, Luke Combs. It's the life is a high weighing of America. Yeah, I'm still finding out that uh like some songs that like I downloaded from a, a illegal streaming service as a kid are, are not, not by that artist are not by the artist that like it, it was like marketed as from like LimeWire or Napster. I think that's one of them. I always thought that Life Is a Highway was Tom Petty. No, yeah. it's uh, I, I actually always forget. It's Life actually is a Rascal Flatts is by uh, Tom Cochran, but it does say when I googled Life Is a Highway original, the Wikipedia automatic thing. Comes up, it says "Life Is a Highway," sung by Rascal Flatts. Oh God, yeah, that upsets me. But I said this on the boat recently, and uh, somebody thought I was saying it to be a wise ass. But I said it sincerely. I was like, "You don't know some things until you know them." Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. It's like, how the fuck? Like, like I wasn't going out of my way to be like, "Hey, who sings this song?" Because I thought that I knew. It's difference between you and me, but yeah, fair. I'm like, I thought that check. I knew, and then like until it comes up on like Spotify, I, I that's how I found out. Like last week, I remember my pal Luke Bonner told me years ago. He said, uh, "Don't make fun of somebody or judge them for mispronouncing a word because it just means they probably read it more than they've." heard it they're not being a dummy they just haven't heard it pronounced correctly yet mm -hmm. hey it's uh it's all part of this big crazy thing that we call life uh the miranda lambert thing it will be the follow-up to last week's jonah hill conversation where i say i wish everybody could go to therapy or did go <laughs> okay. to therapy because i don't think that miranda lambert is a bad guy well, yeah, for she's a bad woman having that feeling no. <laughs> and to be like you know what i'm trying to fucking play the song like what the turn around face me listen to the music or whatever but she just communicated it, it was very poorly so communicated. poorly yeah. and just immediately does make her look like a bad guy and yeah, an asshole. I, it does for sure and then like i i kind of changed my tune I, like she it definitely came off as an asshole and seen just the clip of her addressing it or whatever. Uh, and let's then, quickly and then, give uh, uh, the the story. By the way, my my bad. Uh, she stopped a song and said, 
hey, uh, I'm trying to play some country music, and these girls taking selfies are driving me crazy. So uh, you want to hear some country music? I'm playing some country music. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. And and, yeah, yeah. So like it it just seemed like, you know, like everybody takes pictures, everybody takes selfies when they go to a concert, whatever. It just seems like something that you probably have to deal with as a singer and calling it out, stopping a song and like basically like essentially calling these these girls assholes on stage in front of thousands of people. Probably not the best way to handle it. But I did change my tune a little bit today when I saw, like, there was, like, a news article that showed the actual picture that the girls were taking. Yo! It, they were all standing up. The flash was clearly on. Catch that plot thickening, brother. Yes. <laughs> and they were, I guess, like, I don't know if they said, like, Miranda Lambert was trying to stop it because, like, they, these people were blocking the view of, like, people that were seated, seated behind them. And that I can for sure get. Like, if they're standing up taking a bunch of pictures in the middle of a song all in a row, because there was, like, four of them all in a row, and it wasn't a selfie. It was just a picture of these people. So, like, this that was, like, just that would have been distracting, and I would have been annoyed if I was in the crowd. I believe she was also playing a ballad, to further your point. That is inappropriate behavior. I initially saw the picture, and I was like, you know what? They're so far away. It's fair game. That's like first, first row. row with a balcony. No, they were first row in the on the floor, like on the floor. No, yes, because they because they had like the barrier uh, with distance between the stage. That's they how weren't far. Yeah, it was? they weren't. I, it's I believe that I saw in the article that they were first row. Uh, but I I think it was first row of the. No, brother, they're on the floor. Fuck, she wouldn't be somewhere. able to. Let she wouldn't be able see. to see them if they were on the balcony. Oh, I know. I think that she was being uh, an a-hole. Why can't I find... Do uh, you, you have pop-up ads? No. I, I got a pop-up ad. <laughs> the fuck is this? 14, what you, I was going to say, what are, you, what are you in 2004 right now? Yo, is that Christopher Columbus over there? <laughs> Just fucking pop-up ads? Let me see. Miranda Lambert. Uh, come on. Right there, there's a picture. Dude, on the floor. No, uh, see. So that's like um that's first row. That's of like, like a, a secondary That's like, like a secondary box the, thing. Yeah, where well, like they have a like, front like section. The sta- like the state theater in, in Portland where they have like the yes, floor. Yeah. And then there's like a step up where yeah. it's essentially like standing room but stadium standing room. You've been to the uh Leader Bank Pavilion, correct? Yes. They'll do like a front area. And then they have like a small little box area right behind that. Yeah. I think that that is a very nice touch. And if you're ever able to get into one of those areas, you should do it. I'm considering going there on Friday because uh, Phil Lesh of the Grateful Dead is playing. And that guy is 83 years old. So I'm not uh, positive how many legs of this tour there will be, if you know what I'm saying. so <laughs> He's going to die soon. I might go to that. Um, so... I do agree with... I, I saw uh, the uh, new pornographers uh, a few months ago, and after the second or third song, they'd done some light, hey, it's nice to be here, thanks for being here. They play their songs. And after like the second or third song, uh, one of the singers said, like, I would love it if you all put your phones away and mm-hmm. just like had the mo- shared the moment, blah, blah. That's how you do it, I think. But, you know... It's country music, and there's we got uh, uh, piss and uh, balsamic in our blood, so we're just gonna. We should got that song, uh, Miranda Lambert, famously kerosene. So she's, I don't know any. I don't know even know who Miranda Lambert is. So, really? Yeah. Don't that surprised me. You didn't have a country phase. Mm-mm. Really? Mm-mm. That's right. Before Pete had never been to a concert before he knew me. He'd been to one concert, and then I I told him about concerts. So then he started That's listening. Not true. He started going go back and listen. <laughs> that yeah. is not true. It actually is. No, you, you'd only been to. I think you'd said you'd been to like two or three concerts. Yeah, well, it wasn't one. But you you hadn't even heard of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, seriously, you were like, how do I? I know people. How go do to I them. do this? I know people like go to them, but like, do you have to get invited? And I told you about tickets. Shut up. Yeah. 
I told you about John Mayer also. Fuck off. Uh, the the Miranda Lambert picture, like, I can definitely see why people would get annoyed because they perfectly framed her in between both sides of them, which means that they stood there and they probably shifted around for, like, four minutes trying to perfectly frame her and get that photo, which, like, they not the, the worst photo. They were the Pretty good photo. If you're going to get yelled at from by Miranda Lambert from stage... At least get a good photo out of it, and they did. So they were uh, they were driving with the driving crooner, baby. That's right. <laughs> they were trying to line it up perfectly. You got to be right. You got to be people, right next. You to You don't it. want people to think it's fake. I mean, a lot of people want to kill them. <laughs> I bet. And they only got 150 53 likes based off this screenshot. Uh, Not th- worth it. Um. All right. So that's th- that's two legs of the chaos, and the third is Jason Aldean. I don't really uh, even know if we need to go there because that guy seems like he fucking sucks. I hadn't heard of Jason Aldean in 100 years. Yeah. Well, that's not true. I was just in Nashville. He owns that fucking gigantic bar in Nashville. Right. Jason Aldean. Which is, yeah, famously. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I hate that guy simply for that bar because it's, it's a fucking monstrosity. And I hate that Broadway is getting swallowed up by these fucking monstrosity bars that now consume, like, the entire strip, and they feel soulless. Uh, do you want the lyrics to try I've that in a him. small I've town? I've seen him, brother. Sucker punch somebody on a sidewalk. Carjack an old lady at a red light. Pull a gun on the owner of a liquor store. You think it's cool? Well, act like a fool if you like. Cuss out a cop. Spit in his face. Stomp on the flag and light it. By the way, I'll note, I'm not for any of these things. Yeah, no, I, I, I wouldn't personally. Even, I, I am typically not, what is it, uh, carjacking an old lady at a red light. Also, uh, hey, Jason, we call them elderly ladies. Yeah. What are you, fucking DJ Bean in the Boston Globe? <laughs> second grade? <laughs> Hate old people useless. much? Uh, yeah, you think you're tough. Well, try that in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. Jeez. Around here, we take care of our own. You cross that line, it won't take long. For you to find out, I recommend you don't. Try that in a small town. I'll be honest with you. Hey, Jason, uh, try making a less weird song, you weirdo. Yeah, cool Van Morrison stage, brother. Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, then Eric Clapton rips like a nine-minute <laughs> solo. Real and Van good. Morrison's like, You'll, I'm going to find you on Facebook. Uh, yeah. And I- I'm willing to bet. I haven't done any of these things, haven't committed any crimes in a small or big town, but (laughs) I'm willing to bet that I would be more likely to get away with it in a small town. If I rob an old lady and carjack her at gunpoint, I'm taking my chances in a small town versus the big city. A lot more people around. Probably a lot more police. True. But Way everybody else less you, densely populated. But you could do process of elimination uh, alibis real quick in a small town. Yeah, but you do a fucking. It's called driving the car and going away, like making a getaway. So you're gonna take he it said, to a he big said, town. Exactly. He said, "See how far you get." I'll take him up on that offer because I'm going far away and he ain't finding me. Try well. T- now we got to find out where Jason Aldean lives, and we got to go commit some crimes. That is such a good idea. <laughs> Just social experience. See what we can try in a small town. Just be New like, YouTube video. Hey, everybody <laughs> stole a pack of gum from a convenience store. Left Come and get me, for brother. The owner. Uh, everything I think is above board. I'm gonna go in and let the guy know it's all cool, and uh, we're gonna donate to any of his causes. But uh, tried and completed in a small town. Suck my dick, Jason. <laughs> You know who I bet would find me way faster than Jason Aldean? Who? That geo guesser guy. That oh, guy yeah. could find me anywhere He'd be in like, the I world. I got it. You're in a small town. How does he? How does that guy not work for like the federal government? I think that he says like the federal government and all these places can do this very very quickly. I'm just merely walking through <laughs> how they do it. Like He's I'm, not walking. He is speed running through I, how they do it. I've been watching this show 24. It's set like 20 years ago. And they'll just be like, hey, uh, somebody stole a gun from a small town. Do we have surveillance cameras? And they're like, yes. <laughs> just like general. Yes, there's surveillance cameras everywhere. And they just say, uh, zoom in. And they zoom in and everything's crystal clear. And then something, there's like recognition software. It says what the person's job is. And so, I mean, if they got that, then. 
They in a small town? Have, they definitely don't have that. Do they? That's got to be I mean, crazy. It, it is funny that I've been then, watching a lot, of, a lot of Mission Impossible, and we'll get to that in a little bit, but they seem to have the same sort of software where like, they can scan anybody's face in an airport like as it's happening and be like, oop, got a match. Yeah. That shit seems a little too crazy for me. I mean, me. that was in the, famously in the most recent uh, yeah. Mission Impossible. I mean, dude, which they, they, were doing, they were doing that like 12 years ago. Let's talk about the let's, Mission Impossible stuff because... Okay, you know, let's do a, a little break from our sponsors. Uh, Muggsy. Muggsy. We, we like Muggsy quite a bit. I'd love to wear them someday. For sure. Same here. Because... They make the most comfortable jeans, chinos, shorts, and joggers. Basically, anything that you can put on your your fine legs, they're making the best possible ones that you can buy because they make them from buttery, soft, patented stretch materials that look stylish but are insanely comfortable, famously and allegedly. Never too baggy, never too tight. And butter is made from uh, churned cream. That's true. (laughs) And you know how they say uh, butter is the best thing to happen since sliced Slice bread? bread? Yeah. Muggsy jeans are frankly the best thing to happen to legs since chairs. Wow. So Unless never in human from, uh, jury duty. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I'm, I'm really yeah. I've, it's oh, like, it's like ahead. on my to watch list. Never in human history have legs been so spoiled by pure softness and comfort while looking so goddamn good. The guys at Muggsy have one mission in life: to give every guy the confidence to walk blindly into their closet, reach out, and know whatever they pick will have them looking good and feeling even better. You will literally never have to shop anywhere else ever again. Allegedly, uh, we are still waiting on our Muggsy Care package. Yes. I didn't want to bring it up, but we're still waiting. And uh, it, this read is asking it's, for a personal testimony about the style and comfort. I can't provide that, but I've heard good I've things. heard so many great testimonials from people close to me, including the guys at Wash. They love him. So they love good them. the post office is stealing. <laughs> That's it. right. Yeah. My mailman can't say enough about the Muggsy jeans that he has stolen from me. My mailman is moving mm. in grace. Hey, buddy, why don't you try that in a small town? See how far it gets mm. you. Jason LT will hunt you down if you steal his Muggsy jeans. Muggsy also just dropped their Cool Max denim that are like air conditioners for your legs. They spent years in a lab developing the most breathable jeans ever. They're designed with lightweight fibers, and they ensure that a cool breeze will hit you with every single step. Go from the backyard barbecue to the bar in one swift motion all summer long. Go to Muggsy.com and get 10% off uh, using promo code BRUNCH. That's 10% off some of the most premium jeans, chinos, swimwears, and shorts on the internet. They also offer free shipping in return, so there's no risk. So give them a try. If you're in Chicago, Boston, D.C., or Austin, Texas, you can go downtown and check out their storefront as well. Great vibes, and they'll give you a beer while you shop. That's Muggsy.com for 10% off using promo code BRUNCH. Brunch, go do it. We'll wait for our uh, our mailman to to make good on the product that he owes us. Um, if I name the episode uh, Jason Aldean's Muggsy Jeans, do you think Muggsy would be mad, or do you think Jason Aldean would be mad? I think that Muggsy would have more of a right to be upset. Yeah, no, I don't. I think that rough, ruffling good. the feathers of our sponsors and rocking that boat yeah. is is a thing that we've done in the past, and I think yeah. that we should stay away from it. But no, but but who do you think would be more offended by by being associated with the other when I'll, they aren't? I'll be honest. I think that Jason Aldean has a little bit more to worry about these days. I like, mean, he's got people in his small town. That's right. Like his grandmother's getting he's now taking on the He's now taking on the he's the he's Batman in uh, the most recent. <laughs> Batman. He's just like one of the cops. And they're like, are you one of the cops? And he's like, yeah, I think so. I'm like, why? And he's like, because I came here. Uh, that, and the episode title is definitely Jason Aldean is Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Aldean. Uh, but, do you think so, that he gets overwhelmed in the city? He's like, there's so many criminals. I can't keep track of all these fuckers. Uh, if this were a small town, I'd be fine. <laughs> That guy, that guy's got his hand in too many pots. He's doing country music. He's just destroying Nashville, and he's also fighting crime. 
Not enough people also fight crime. Yeah, it's a dying actually, art for sure. Actually, you know what? That's actually wrong. Because unfortunately, <laughs> a lot of people in the United States fancy themselves fighters of crime. But do they actually fight crime? Or do they just like, are they, do they pose as watchdogs and crime fighters on the internet? Uh, unfortunately, both. Because like a lot of like horrible shit has happened from people being like, I'm going to take this into my own hands. Right, right, like, saw a wrong that needed writing and you're like what what specifically did you see <laughs> any home uh you saw the mission Imp- you saw all the mission impossible movies i've seen all of the you mission felt impossible bad you movies. hadn't seen uh red cool. dead uh, redemption and you felt bad because you hadn't seen any of the mission impossible movies that's i was not telling true. you about the mission impossible movies so you're like whoa 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 i trust you deej but let me form my own opinion this of them by so now far you're watching your most them. annoying episode in a long time so now you're watching them and what do you think do you agree with me <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I, uh, I I saw Dead Reckoning this past week, and before I did that, I wanted to watch all of the Mission Impossibles, some of which were rewatches, many of which were rewatches, uh, a few of them I hadn't seen, period. So I went through, Same. watched all seven of them in the span of a week, and I'll tell you what, that like that came out of nowhere to be one of my like favorite franchises ever. Like, yeah. I, like, it's always existed to me, but never, like, something that I had thought of as, like, damn, this is so fucking cool. I, I, I think the first time that Mission Impossible ever hit me as being so fucking cool was Fallout. Same. Because I saw Fallout, and I was like, this is one of the best action movies I've ever seen in my life. And it is the best of the Mission Impossible series. But I'll tell you, once you hit Mission Impossible 3, they are all incredible movies. Yeah, I have not seen... Except, I will say, with the exception of Dead Reckoning, which is a good and very fun time, but a second-tier Mission Impossible movie. Exactly. And I feel that people, when I first saw it, did I I see it maybe before it came out or something? Yeah, you saw it like a screen or two days before it hit. Okay, because I felt like a little bit of a, uh, like, fun police. Yeah, 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 party pooper, because, um, I don't know, maybe like the only people that I'd seen who had commented on it were like jeff lowe and stuff and they all really loved it and thought it was incredible and i was like fuck i don't know maybe it's not for me it was it was really good but it was it's not like incredible and then over time it's i will say like i agree with you and i'm sorry to cut you off but like we are in like the golden age of action movies and so it's not your fault or like it's no uh it's no like it's no horrible yeah that, that you're not as good as, and I do remember saying this last week, so I apologize for repeating myself. Like, if you're not as good as John Wick Four and Mission Impossible Fallout and Top Gun Maverick, it just means you're like not one of the best a hundred movies ever, maybe that I've seen. Yeah, this is really, really good. It's just not quite there. I don't remember if I've seen any of the first three. Dude, uh, have you seen? Have you seen like the last four? Like the Jer- the Jeremy Renner ones, like the Ghost Protocol, the, Rogue what's Nation. What's the one that they? I was in uh, Czech Republic in 2010 when they were shooting one of them, and we went to where they were shooting it, and everyone was so excited, and I didn't really give a shit. Okay, I was like, oh cool. So like Tom Cruise is here. Are any of the other people from Tropic Thunder here? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> I uh, took a picture and my flash went off. Actually, it was really embarrassing. Yikes! Uh, Miranda Lambert yeah. yelled at you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, dude. Well, how about Jason Aldean chasing down everybody in Mission Impossible? Like Tom Cruise is sprinting after somebody, and then Jason Aldean's like four steps behind, just pawing ass. That's something that I don't get. By the way, I'm gonna sound stupid, but uh, we all have our moments. The Tom Cruise run. The people make a big thing about like Tom Cruise running. Yeah, and I'm like. I don't think it's that weird or no, but silly but they do it. They, no, but like no, it's, it's, not, it's, it's just not, that he's always running. Yeah, that they're they're not like making fun of the run. They're just so it's they, not the kid from Taken. It's it's no 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 definitely not. No, it's it's like one of the staples of Mission Impossible. If you do the rewatch, you see that they they have like this checklist of things that they have to hit with every Mission Impossible movie, and they do it every time. One of them is like, you know, when they brief him with a mission, choose to accept it or not, like this message will self-destruct in five seconds. That happens every time. They do the mask every time, the mask trick. That's something that has to happen in a Mission Impossible I didn't know that was the thing from the beginning. 
I saw yes, that. Yeah. So I remember so when, when in it happened Fallout, in Fallout, I, thought it was, I was so cool. I thought it was so lame. When in, in Fallout, I saw it, I was like, oh, they're doing this again? They've done this before. <laughs> but when you watch them through, you're like, oh, okay. This is just like something that has to happen. In this a mission same of, supporting cast? Yeah. So, and so it's like it's sort of like an inside joke for the franchise. And so they do that. Um, one of the things they always do is the run. Um, like, uh, I forget what else. There, there's a few other things that they always do. Um, but yeah, like that, that thing like needs to happen. And the run is just like something that's become synonymous with the franchise. This probably won't make you psyched. I think it's more likely I go and watch a couple of Mission Impossible movies than I start Andor. No, I'm total. I'm totally fine with you flying through all seven of the Mission Impossible things because, like, I am very tempted to just restart them and go through again. It's and just you so don't want to be the asshole that does the, hey, I'm checking out this beloved thing that everybody already knows, but I really want to talk about it right now. Yeah, and I'm, but I'm the only one that's just checking it out. It, I'm not. Yeah. Like I'm not. Like everybody's been. Are people like, doing rewatches? Yeah, people are doing rewatches, and they like want to talk about it, which is very exciting to me. But it would bring me so much joy if you were to like, because you love to like live text while you're watching movies. It would bring me so much joy if you live texted like the final like four or five Mission Impossible's to me. Okay, I don't. I didn't even know that I did that until you uh, said. Yeah, it. like you, you'll be like, this person shows up, or like this thing just happened, and like, the, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like that stuff with Mission Impossible will bring me so much joy because that's all I wanted to do while I was watching it. Uh, like starting with with MI three, like it's it's just so fun, and that's why it makes me so mad when people poo poo like the they do the same thing in every movie and blah blah. blah. It's like the same movie every time. It's like. No, it's not. Like they they have the same formula, but you want to watch a Mission Impossible movie. Mm. And like you're getting to watch a Mission Impossible movie and to me that's so fucking cool. <laughs> On the subject of poo-pooing things, I want to give a shout out to our uh, pals at KFC Radio because they and uh, a lot of people I'm seeing right now, they're just the most recent I've seen do it are saying that they don't like the bear yeah, and uh, I, Dave did it. Portnoy did it. And I... Oh, so it's just like a bar stool yeah, wide thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. It's it, getting La La it, landed, man. Oh, no, no. See, I don't think it is. I think that it's a great thing that has qualities that make you love it or possibly not love it. And I like that people are being honest and saying, hey, I don't... I, I'm supposed to love this thing, and I don't. I'm sorry. When I do that shit, I feel terrible and i feel like i'm being uh like annoying or whatever i th like i don't like we've talked about this i don't like when everybody universally says something's great when i'm like i know your personality you're fucking boring not boring but like you're not the type that would get into this super weird thing but this weird thing's very but the bear is not super weird like it has like qualities to it that may not be for everybody like the stressfulness of yeah. it but like I don't know. I think it's pretty – it's one of those things that, like, if everybody loved it, I could see everybody loving it. Oh, see, I, I don't think – and I say this in a good way. I don't think – the second season, yes. I don't think it's the most accessible oh, yeah, thing no, in no, the no, world. No, 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 no. Like, no, season one, uh, if you were like, ah, I watched it, wasn't for me, I'd be like, okay, yeah, no, that that that's all right. Like, I mean, we talked about it. Season one – Yeah, like, season one isn't that good. No. It, it, I mean, it was very good, but it was it was just like – you know, I, I wouldn't recommend it to, like, I wouldn't hard push it on everybody, mm. you know? Like, I would hard push season two on everybody, and maybe, like, my overall view of the bear has changed because of that. But, like, I don't know. Like, I have some issues with, I, I guess, specifically with, with what Portnoy said. He was, like, he was talking about, like, how fucking slow it was and, like... And he was like, I love I, I don't like to like uh, to talk shit about shows that everybody loves. Like, I'm not doing this just because everybody loves it. Like Succession is one of my favorite shows, but the bear is just too slow. And I was like, my brother, Succession is like the I slowest have a lot of show prestige ever. TV shows. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> it was the, I can't be racist. I'm the That's biggest a, collector yeah. of, of MLK oh. memorabilia. Oh, go easy God bless our, our pal Darren Rovell. No, but like he he pointed out like Succession and like Game of Thrones as like two shows that he loves and like Breaking Bad. And like those shows are slow burns. Maybe not like maybe not 
Game of Thrones because they have like a crazy ass episode every once in a while. But like Succession and Breaking Bad are two of the slowest shows. I disagree on Breaking Bad. The, Breaking, Breaking Bad, Bad was slow for quite some time. Breaking Bad gets slow, but it yeah. fucking it is. Fair. They light that fuse and it goes fucking bonkers. Y- yeah, but like you gotta, you, it takes a fucking while to get there. I don't know. Like Better like Call Saul, two, slow burn. Season three. I haven't rewatched Breaking Bad in a while, but I remember in the middle it being like uh, no, so pretty slow. Once they're in the super lab, things get stale for like three or four episodes. Other than that, they're typically fucking moving. And okay. then once they get to season five, they're really cooking. All right, well, Succession, because there's that's very more recent. Yeah. That show is slow as fuck. It's, succession is Nothing essentially happens. the same thing happening <laughs> yeah. three times very, very slowly. Yes. So that, that was my more like that's kind of the, the criticism that bothered me a little bit more. But like if the bear isn't for you, then it's not for you or whatever. Uh, I forgot to bring up a topic I'd had circled, wanted it to be like the main show topic last week, and then forgot. I don't know what we ended up doing and said. I do remember we had a good episode, but I don't remember anything about it. Also, patreon.com slash listen to brunch. That's the only place you can find uh, Pete's portion of the Shake It Off video. I did send that portion to uh, a friend, and they agreed that it uh just for time's sake had to be cut for, wasn't because necessary. it was like maybe uh, it was further establishing something had, that had already been established but it also elements of it would make like for some of the top moments of the whole video so you so you'll you'll want to see it how are my like that video chops? did i get any reviews uh we did two takes of it, and I really liked one of your takes, and that okay. was the one that I was going to okay. put in there. Uh, I'd like to try acting a little bit more. We talked about this. You, I think, like, classes, probably. Yeah, for sure. Do some of that, limber up, get yeah. a little loose. Yeah. Yeah. I told somebody recently, just, like, put me in some of your stuff. Why? You're going to fucking put somebody else in it who's an actor who fucking cares i mean we see a lot of people who are just like getting shots as actors just because like why not yeah so why not us yeah put us in something uh yeah but you wanted to talk about uh yeah. seasons yes uh, i i want to talk about the month of july but forgot to do it and then this past week uh emerson lotzia 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 i think lotzia uh friend of the podcast sent a tweet saying this is the ranking of months the ultimate undisputed power rankings of the season i don't even need to read the tweet because i have it memorized because it's the right order i mean it, it also got lots of retweets i'm sure a lot of engagement yeah. he said one fall two winter three spring four summer and i completely agree mm. and specifically gary streisky it was pushing that this is correct. I agree. You're allowed to disagree with it. But my main thing here is it dawned on me a few weeks ago. I fucking hate July. And I don't really think about it until every July. I feel my worst every fucking July. Clearly, you shaved your head. Weather in <laughs> shit you can get by going places. It's not fucking... Uh, like Boston, yes, it's hotter in July here than in the fucking winter or fall or whatever. But in the winter, you could go to fucking LA or Florida or whatever. And if you and if it's just simply I need heat, you could fucking go somewhere. Not for everybody it. has the ability to do that. The vibes in July for me are just not fucking good. You're and showing I, your privilege. Bro. I threw it to some friends. I was like, hey, this is gonna sound crazy. I think July is my least favorite month. And I got a lot of agreement on it. Of uh, like, yeah, July's stupid. Definitely not my least favorite month. But, like, I can understand why you would say, like, it's not as great as everybody makes it up to be. Like, if people want to say that the summer sucks, like, 
whatever. Like, that's fine. I disagree. But there are elements to, like, why I like the summer so much. Like, hockey's over and and I finally get, like, a, some time to breathe and do whatever I want to do. I get to travel. get to do all that shit. But, like, if you're not a person who, like, loves the heat or whatever, you don't have fucking central air, you don't like blasting your AC or whatever, I could totally see why somebody would hate the summer. But, like, so with the, the ranking or whatever... Fall, definitely the best season, 100%. That also, though, is bias from living in New England. I'm sure. Eh, yeah, like, but, like, not not necessarily. Like, that's a – if you're a sports fan, it's the best fucking time yeah. of the year. So, like, that's – those are the two two reasons why I love it so much. Um, like, just the weather and the, the sports coming back and, and how great uh, uh, it is on the sports schedule. My biggest gripe about this list, like, having winter over summer, I'm totally fine with. I love Christmas. I love, like – Music's biggest night. That's true. Uh, um, it's like I, I'm totally fine with you if you want to say that winter is better than summer. What I don't agree with is spring being better than anything. I can't stand. Oh, the spring. I forgot about that. P- Pete doesn't. Pete until he started doing the podcast didn't know what spring was, and I still don't know what spring is. Doesn't know what spring I still is. don't know what spring is, and that's my biggest gripe with it. It has no idea what it is. It has no identity. Doesn't know what it wants to be. Doesn't ha- has a real personality disorder. I do. I I don't know why. I really really like your spring take, and every time I tell you that I like it, I make sure you know. I'm like. It's wrong. It's stupid. <laughs> like, yeah, like it's you being stupid, but I think it's very funny, and I hope you keep doing it. I hate it. I hate spring. It's disgusting. It is the most disgusting. It's season. It's like raining in December, and Pete tweets like, <laughs> "See, this is why spring sucks," and you guys all like spring because if it's raining in December, it means it's not cold enough to be snowing, which means it's the spring. <laughs> It is a good take. I got to say telling you. it's a really really uh solid take. Uh what do you uh you you see you, you see a lot of people going to Barbenheimer on the same day? Can you believe this? <laughs> on on Thursday 20,000 uh, uh, uh Hank Kessler of the New England Revolution told me. He said I saw that uh 20,000 people bought tickets to AMC for both movies on the same day. And I is that said, like in Massachusetts? Because everybody should be doing that. Yeah, I was like, wow, 19,999 other people did that? <laughs> because catch me doing that, man. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm a little jealous. I'm not going on Thursday. I am doing the double feature, but I'm waiting till Saturday. Because I, I just like really love the idea of going to Barbie in the morning. And then doing Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer in the early afternoon. Are you doing? Are you doing Barbie first? So I always forget this person's name. I, I referenced uh, them on the last podcast too. But Joanna something from The Ringer tweeted a lot next, of people. Next week, he'll this misogynist will learn her name. No, next week we have the kid from Wendy's. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I wanted to have the kid from Wendy's. Oh yeah, last week's episode was Wataski. Yeah, he was the best. Um, this uh, Joanna, who's very good, tweeted a lot of people are buying tickets for all caps. She does all caps, which I'm not crazy about. But uh, all Joanna caps. Gaines. Okay, Joanna Gaines. It's that's Joe wrote this. Uh, yes. Uh, Her Barbie, husband is Chip. Barbie, and then all caps Oppenheimer. This is not the order in which you should be doing it. You should see Oppenheimer first and then wind down with Barbie. And I saw that and I was like, that's correct. But I already bought my tickets. And I, if I'd known that going in, I still think I would have gotten a little fucky. And yeah, because famously, you don't like being depressed. I don't get that. Like, you're going to be super depressed after leaving Oppenheimer. I mean,. Spoiler alert, I'm going to be super depressed going into Oppenheimer. <laughs> no, I know. That I'm going to be the, super depressed during Barbie, that before was the Barbie, joke. after. That, like, you, you're not turned off by the idea of being depressed leaving the experience. Yeah. I assume that that's why, so that's is, why it, because like Barbie will be a palate cleanser for Oppenheimer, more like uplifting experience. I do think that Bar- Barbie's going to be pretty dark, but like I think at the end of the movie you'll come away from it feeling a lot better than you will from Oppenheimer. I've said this before. I can't get too excited about Barbie. I, I'm not very excited for either of these movies, if oh, I'm being completely honest. My brother. Who, 
I, me and you are different people because I am so excited. Like I haven't read a word. Like I've I've seen what like the Heim girls are posting about it and stuff. So like that's basically where I've been getting my Barbie stuff. That's I follow like what Issa. makes me most excited about it. I'm just like excited about both of these movies without knowing a ton about them. I'm going in like somewhat blind, like a a palatable amount of blind for both movies, and that makes me really excited. Yeah, but. The only thing I uh, right does 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 Oppenheimer? What's Oppenheimer about? Does it do a ligma? No, fuck you. What ligma? Yeah, ligma balls. Yeah, bruv. I know, bro. <laughs> I knew what you were doing there. <laughs> you stupid bitch. That's twice today. I've tried to do that. I tried to get my mom on Henway, and she didn't respond to the text. She just pressed ha ha, which fucking is such a burn. And then the fact that you tried to I get couldn't me even with get Ligma you on is Ligma. so insulting. Oh no, I think I could get you on Ligma. No, I've been on the internet for more than thirty uh, sleepy seconds. Sleepy Pete Blackburn, I'm getting you on Ligma a lot. You yeah, don't even you know what a concert horrible was. setup. Uh, horrible setup. All right, uh, Oppenheimer is supposed to be a palate cleanser. You said <laughs> yes. 